you can't look just above the surface at what you see here. We've got to be looking below the surface. You no, know, it's not really about how much rain you get, it's about how much you keep. That's the big thing about soil health is we increase the soil health and the soil microbial activity and increase the pore spaces in the soil for water holding capacity. We could take a two inch rain and keep all of it. We're making transitions on our properties just like we'll be asking producers to do if they're interested in regenerative ranching. It gets back to how do we build better soils, better landscapes, better profitability, and hopefully happier and healthier families. And that's our charge. Our regenerative journey started with seven research ranches, a total of 14,000 acres. Located across southern Oklahoma, each ranch property is unique in topography, use, and history. We want to take you along on our journey, showing you the challenges, the lessons we've learned, and the victories along the way to regenerating the ranch. There's no one-size-fits-all recipe to regenerative ranching. It all depends on the context of each property. Joe Poke, Noble's general ranch manager, gives us a rundown of the seven Noble ranches. This is Noble ranches as we know them. We separate them out of seven different properties, as you can see. Down here in the south is the Red River Ranch. You introduce forages right on the river, got a lot of sand. We run sheep and cow-calf down there. Coffee Ranch is a native pasture ranch. We run cow-calf there, a little rockier. Going north is rockier still. We run cow-calf and stalker here as well as goats. Over at Conrad McMillan, the con farm is a production for con farm. Uh, we're introducing grazing animals in there the first time this year. Headquarters is historically grazing and small plot research, so we've planted all that back to be grazing and fenced some new areas in. So we run stalkers and kind of our market cows up here. Uh, PDF, or pasture demonstration facility, is a really great stalker ranch. We're doing a little heifer development up there right now, and we'll continue to use that for stalkers. And Doopies are really good. Great soil, real great introduced forage facility. We use that to pretty much put gain on anything we want to sell. Doopy seems to make a lot of forage and make a lot of things fat, so we like it up there. Noble hasn't always focused on regenerative practices. In the past, the ranch was really used to house research projects. They were small plot trials, forage per trials, and grazing trials, and the, the practices of that lead to more of a degraded state compared to the regenerative principles we apply now. All the ranches are unique in their own right. Some of them are introduced forages and some of them are native range, but the goal remains the same regardless of the enterprises. We want to be improving soil health constantly and improving our bottom line. The main things we're implementing to improve our soil health is sound grazing practices. And everything we do, we try to apply the six soil health principles. And so it's really easy when there's only six to keep up with what we should be doing and what we shouldn't. So practices are many and principles are few, so we really try to focus on the principles. Understanding the context of a property may sound confusing, but Jim Johnson took us to the Red River Ranch to explain it. One of the soil health principles is context. Context is everything about the site, uh, where it is geographically, what the weather is like, how big it is, what the soil type is, what the forage is, what our resources are to use that field, fence and water and livestock. And so context is something I always like to think about whenever I enter a field. This field is one of the fields on the Red River Ranch, one of Noble Research Institute's farms and ranches. And this site is an upland, duny sandy site. So part of the context for this upland sandy site is that it's probably going to be a little bit droughty. Since it's a little bit droughty soil, we might have a hard time keeping as much grass and as much cover on the ground as we would like to have. Jim went on the hunt for some bare ground. With it being a time of low rainfall, he quickly found it. We did not get a 
winter cover crop on this. Same Bermuda grass base, same pasture a few feet away, but instead of having cover where we have bare soil, we just have dry, dry sand. And a, a temperature difference I can feel with my hand. This is, this is warm to the touch. We're probably 80 degrees ambient temperature today. The soil under the cover crop is cool to the touch, cool and moist. Difference I can feel just, just with my hand. I'm sure a, a thermometer would show at least a 10 degree difference, if not more than we've had maybe an inch and a half of rain here. And again, this is a sandy soil, a sandy upland soil, but this sand is dry already. Same amount of rain. Sun is baking down on this. When we think about our ecosystem processes, the energy cycle, energy here is being used to convert liquid moisture into liquid vapor and lost to the atmosphere as the humidity that we're feeling. Uh, moisture in the cover crop is being used to grow plants. This is just being used for evaporation. The terrain on Noble Ranches is so diverse, sometimes a UTV just won't do. So this is my horse, Willie. He's how old are you, Willie? He said he's seven. I've had him about five years. He's a good horse. He's my my number one horse for whenever we need to do stuff. He's pretty reliable. He likes to be talked good about. Sometimes we have disagreements, but he's usually right. Joe and Willie head out to the ranches to check on the impact of today's rain. Rain's pretty important. I'd say how much you keep and how much you lose is just as important. That's the big thing about soil health is we increase the soil health and the soil microbial activity and increase the pore spaces in the soil for water holding capacity. We could take a two inch rain and keep all of it. Having good soil health is, it's like having a good buffer between the extremes in our weather. So the you can hold on to more moisture longer in a really dry time and you can capture more of the moisture when it does rain because you built that resiliency into your system. So that's that's one of the key components of soil health is it it's not feast or famine all the time. We're in poor poor soil health. You always, you know, I think Nicole Master said an inch or two away from drought pretty much all the time because that's only as far as the roots go. So the more the more we can build soil aggregate and build soil biology and have a functioning ecosystem, the more resilient the whole ranch is to any extreme weather. Lush, colorful, thriving forage is a sign of nature's approval. It's a sign to ranchers that their management is working. A diverse ecosystem captures the rainfall and puts it right to work. I've been with Noble Research Institute for 26 years as a consultant. Came here as a pasture and range consultant after spending 10 years running a ranch where we applied a lot of these holistic management type principles that we're talking about with regenerative agriculture. With the problems facing you know, land productivity and, and uh, regeneration in the face of climate variability that we've seen more, most recently, profitability, uh, in, in particular debt, that's associated with the agricultural enterprises and just this declining population of producers coming back into agriculture. You know, we had to find a better way. You know, the, the status quo wasn't gonna be good enough, especially as you begin to see input prices continue to rise and revenue prices or prices for our commodities that we're trying to market weren't rising near fast enough. We had to figure out ways to, to have greater impact, provide more margins to allow for profitability incentivize young people to be able to come back to the land and create additional productivity and regeneration in the land. 
you can't look just above the surface at what you see here. We've got to be looking below the surface. We can demonstrate what it takes to make those transitions because we're making transitions on our properties just like we'll be asking producers to do if they're interested in regenerative ranching. So it gets back to how do we build better soils, better landscapes, better profitability, and hopefully happier and healthier families. And that's our charge. We see that with regenerative ranching, this is an area where more producers are reaching all three of those goals. This is our journey, one of direction over perfection, as we move toward greater successes. Come along with us as we explore what works and what doesn't, and build healthier, more profitable ranches along the way.